you have heard me uh, many times, <laughs> particularly in the last year, uh, voice concerns about uh, Kurt Schrader. He's, uh, he represents, or he's a Democrat representing Oregon's 5th District, um, has worked to sabotage Biden's Build Back Better. Uh, he's the heir of uh, the Pfizer fortune and has worked to prevent uh, Medicare from negotiating drug prices and, and other, shall we say, problematic positions that uh, this uh, so-called Democrat has taken. And two years ago, uh, we had Mark Gamba on the program. He was uh, a primary challenger to uh, Schrader. It was not successful. Uh, now he's got a new primary challenger, and, and, and this one, this person I think is, really has a chance, has been endorsed by Indivisible and, and uh, groups all over the country. Uh, great, a great article uh, about her just recently on um, a Daily Kos as well. Uh, Jamie McLeod Skinner uh, is, is running uh, against, you know, in the primary against Kurt Schrader here in the new, newly withdrawn 5th District. And by, by the way, about a third of the voters are going to be new. Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, for F-O-R, Oregon.com is the website, and also the Twitter handle, Jamie for Oregon. Jamie McLeod Skinner, welcome to the program. Tell us, tell us about your candidacy and your campaign. Whoop, hang on just a second, Jamie. I got to push the button here. I forgot. <laughs> My apologies. Back to you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tom, for the opportunity to have this conversation. And yeah, this is an exciting opportunity to get better leadership for Oregonians and really for all Americans in Congress. And it's actually more than more than even a third. This over half the district is new. And so this is an opportunity to really replace someone who has not been a true incumbent uh, with someone who shares the values of Oregonians and Americans in, in wanting to get things done for our families. Um, so a, a little bit about me. I um, you know, I was very influenced by my mom uh, growing up and she would get up early to drive a school bus, teach all day, and drive a school bus home. In the summers, she would pick fruit in the orchards, put food on our table. And uh, that sense of commitment to family and, um, and also service is, is what really shaped me. I, um, after getting degrees in, in engineering planning, I wanted to serve. The, the war in Bosnia just ended. And um, I couldn't, I had come out as a young adult, so I couldn't serve in the military. So I worked for a humanitarian organization uh, managing the repairs of schools and hospitals in Bosnia and Kosovo. Uh, most recently, I've been doing wildfire recovery here in Oregon and also working on affordable housing. That's 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 a, a great CV. And I, where I'd gotten that third from actually was uh, you're you're a rural Democrat, as it were, and Deschutes County is uh, your electoral stronghold. And that that's about a third of the new fifth district. Do I have that right? That's absolutely right. Uh, a third of the likely voters are now in Central Oregon. Uh, where Kurt has never been on the ballot and where I've won every time I've been on the ballot, uh, including against Greg Walden in 2018 when I ran in a very conservative district. And we had the largest voter swing of any congressional race in the country that year. Um, and it was really the start of pushing back. Uh, that's when Walden was trying to take away our health care. And as many folks that have said to me about Schrader, it's like running against Walden again, except in a winnable district. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 a, and a fine thing. Um, t t tell us about the groups that have endorsed you and, and you know, who are supporting you. And, and t to the best of your knowledge, has anybody yet endorsed Kurt Schrader other than maybe Big Pharma? <laughs> uh, he's working on it. He apparently had to take down his endorsement page uh, just because a lot of people have um, – Actually, folks have flipped, and there's folks who have supported him in the past are endorsing me now. Uh, really proud to have Indivisibles, Working Family Party, uh, UFCW. We built a really broad coalition of Democrats um, uh, at the local, state, and national level uh, to to really you know put our shoulders into to getting this done and, and winning this race. Um, I'm actually the best position democrat to win this race uh, we can also talk about what a true democrat is mm -hmm. but um if you look at this is, is a swing district so it's called a d plus one and what that means is when you take a generic republican run again, run them against a generic democrat uh the democrat would win by one percent meaning it'll be a heavily contested race well if you look at past performance had kurt run in a d plus one in 2020 he would have lost had I won in a D plus one in 2018, I would have won by 11%. Whoa. So we, yeah. So, so apples to apples. Um, he's not only not a true incumbent in over half the district now, he also, he's broken trust with a lot of his votes. I know you've spoken about some of those in the past. There's just a laundry list we could go through. 
Uh, he underperforms in his races. And also what I've heard from folks where he served before is a real sense that he's out of touch. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that too. You know, I, I generally don't ever have primary candidates on this show and, and it's because, you know, I've, I've been burned. I mean, I, I've learned this lesson the hard way from uh, having primary candidates on um, from districts that I'm not familiar with, you know, places where I don't live. And, and, and then I discovered that, hey, yeah, that was a great progressive, but there's a better progressive running in that race too. And how, how did I screw that up? Um, but this one, this is close to me, but the, the, main, the main pushback that I get from Democrats about featuring primary races is, oh, that's circular firing squad, and you're gonna make it harder for the Democrat to win in the fall, regardless of who wins, because you've got this primary fight going on. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, you know, Kurt's gone so far to the right that, um, he, you know, he's, as he said with Mark Gamble, he said about me that running to the left of him. Well, of course we are. I mean, he's so far to the right that running to the left of him just means you're a Democrat. Um, and, and the other thing, too, is this argument about uh, being a moderate. Well, we're in a time of crisis right now. Our families are in crisis. Our climate's in crisis. Our democracy's in crisis. And when you're in a time of crisis, not addressing it doesn't make you a moderate. It just makes you ineffective. So what we, what we really focus on doing is problem solving. And, you know, that's how we bring folks together. I, as a rural Democrat, I've built coalitions across not just the, the urban rural divide, but the political divide as well. And, and the trick there is really to, to focus on the challenges we're all facing and talk about those things and, and bring people to the table to talk about how we overcome the challenges of, you know, putting a roof over our head and food on our table and opportunities for our kids and, and health care for all so that people don't go bankrupt. I mean, those are the things that bring us together. And, you know, I, I, in this race specifically, um, we will – uh, we're working to get the better candidate elected, the better connect uh, the, that, the candidate who's better um, a representative of our values in the primary. We'll do the same in the general. We'll do the same yeah. in the general, and and then it's just a matter of what the choices are now, uh, what the choices are now versus then. And you know the opportunity that I've heard from a lot of folks and a lot of people who've reached out and really encouraged me to run, inc including Mark Gamba, who's endorsing me in this race. It really said, look, we, we, this is an opportunity with a newly drawn district to really have someone who represents our values. And, you know, we're just going to work together to get the job done. Um, again, we'll do that in the primary and we'll do that in the general to find the best match uh, with the choices we have. Any sense who you may be running, uh, assuming you win the primary, <laughs> Knockwood, uh, any sense who you may be running against in the, in the general election? Are the Republicans going to be putting up a Trump humper or is it going to be a, a, a more conventional Republican, in quotes? Uh, no, the two that are most prominent are, are um, wrapped themselves very much in the Trump flag. And so it's someone who's a, a, a former mayor um, in the Happy Valley area and then also someone who's in the Bend area, a businessman who run and um, lost to, to Bent, who currently represents the, the, uh, the second congressional district. But they, you know, they, there's going to be a clear contrast. Again, going, going from the primary to the general, uh, there will be a clear clear contrast either way. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, it's a good thing. And, and, and my apologies if uh, invoking the image of Donald Trump humping the leg of Uncle <laughs> Sam was uh, offensive. Um, Jamie McLeod Skinner, the Democrat for Oregon's new 5th District uh, here, in, here in Oregon, as I said, uh, running Jamie, J-A-M-I-E 4, F-O-R, Oregon.com, and Jamie for Oregon on Twitter. Jamie, I wish you the very best, and I endorse you. Thank you so much for Thank being on the program. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. We'll be back.